Uh, no, nah, not this, not this year. Probably next year. We're gonna plan something, take her Disney and do some right, other trips. Derek, uh, you were on that Zoom call. You, you had a tweet that for you it expressed more emotion than we're used to seeing out of you about yeah. the, the value of running backs. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you handle that at this point? Is it focus on camp, or do you keep an eye on what the other running backs are doing and, and on that pay front? Oh yeah, um, I actually started the. Uh, the group, uh, the group message, and you know, just um, trying to get us together as a camaraderie to uh, start something up to to help the market, to help guys that's been tagged this year, and um, you know, on that Zoom call, having good dialogue, um, definitely revisiting that and and do it again. Um, just any way that you know we can help you know each other uh, as a group, and um, just try to you know better better the market for us in the near future. And um, but when you come to work, you know you you got to focus and do the things you need to do to uh, be a better player and be a great teammate and help your team. So come out here and improve, improve. The advantage of this, the fact that you guys can get on the field and remind people, hey, we do matter. The running game do does still matter in the NFL. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I just try to think of you know the future. Uh, like I said, the guys that got tagged, um, I got tagged and had to go through that process. And um, you know, it just it's, it's tough right now. You feel, uh, you feel what I'm saying? So just want to do anything possible to help show our value, um, um, do it on the field, but definitely, you know, try to be together as a movement to improve the situation. Um, Cause there's been times where the running back sometimes touches the ball more than the quarterback. Have y'all witnessed it? I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all have. So um, yeah, so just trying to show you know, that we are valuable um, as any other position um, that use us and commercials and all over the place. And, you know, we just want our, our share due. Um, DeAndre said that you were a big reason that he came and signed with the Titans. How, what role did you play in any, any recruitment process of him? Um, no, you know, we got to uh, uh, work out during the off season. Uh, he was in Dallas for a little bit, came by the gym, and we talked and, you know, uh, you know got, got to work out and, um, and, and got better. But definitely, DeAndre is somebody that you know always wanted to play with. A uh, big fan of his game, and um, you know, during the process, he was trying to make a decision. And I was a little salty when I seen him in the picture with uh, with, with with the Patriots. And you know, I tried to stay keep my distance as much as possible, but check in every now and then to see what see what was going on. But uh, happy and glad he finally made a decision to come here, and um, happy to be a teammate. Derek, did you so you organize that call? Is that right? Not organize a call. I, I started a group message. And Austin Eckler, you know, he took it over and organized the call with the PA. So did you guys come away with, like, anything that can be actual, anything that you guys can do to, to help change it or make us better? I think it's just um, putting our, our messages out there, um, uh, revisiting um, the subject throughout the season, um, keeping track of guys, um, trying, to, trying to help each other as much as, uh, as, as, much as possible. I thought that was a, a great start, um, having that uh, Zoom call and, having dialogue and guys speaking uh, to the media, being outspoken on how they feel and, you know, about about everything and, you know, seeing the situation. So, you know, I think it's, it's a start, but I think, um, you know, what, what we did is head, headed in the right direction. What do you feel like fraternity a lot, Derek? And do you reach out to these guys individually too to support them, tell them to hang in there? Can you describe maybe how that goes behind the scenes? Yeah, um, well, you know, I just, you know, saw that tweet that I replied to that everybody saw and, um, you know, I. <laughs> <laughs> you're crazy. Um, and, you know, at some point, you know, we got, we got to say something. We got to stand up for, for one another. So I just put a group message of all the top guys and all the RBs and, you know, just um, had open dialogue, everybody writing and, you know, saying how they feel. And, you know, hopefully we get more and more guys um, on board and um, be a part of it and it be something big and hopefully changes to come. Derek, would you ever be interested in doing something like the tight ends do, like a tight end you? Because they just put their name out there so much. And the importance of that position, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that'd be big, you know, because there's so many legendary RBs that have so many, so much knowledge, and if we were able to start something like that and have have them come out, um, just just have like a weekend, a couple of days to just suck up that knowledge from those guys and their experiences. I think that'd be great because I know a lot of guys have a lot of guys to look up to and all the stories, all the highlights, and all the great things we heard about them. It'd be cool to spend a weekend with them and be a sponge to all, all the things they learn. Do you think kids who are
Right, but I mean, so may say someone like you in high school now might choose linebacker, be more likely to try to look at another position. They better. Back. They better choose it how it's going right now, but no, we're trying to change it. But, um, you know, I just tell kids to follow your heart, whatever you have a desire in, a passion, and, you know, what makes you most excited uh, about the game and the position, you know, you play that. And that's something you want to do, that's something you want to pursue, you want to be great at. Um, and um, go go do that. And I just want to be um, a light and a, um, somebody they can look up to that's uh, trying to change the platform of running backs and um, uh, trying to get uh, our share due and try to do what's right. Do you think you've been underpaid in your career? Do I think I've been underpaid? Uh, I don't think so much underpaid, but I, I just think that um, the market's going down. So I just think, you know, guys who've been playing at a high level, playing at an elite level, you know, the game is based on production. And if you've been productive at a high level, um, you know, consistently, then I think you should get your share due. I mean, you see these other positions that you hear about the stars, the superstars who've been productive, playing at a high level, um, some of the best in the league, you know, they're getting these big contracts and getting their share due. And as a running back, we want the same thing. And that tag position, I was tagged, and you know we had to negotiate at a negotiate at a deadline. So I know how you know Josh, Saquon, and um, and Tony, and all those guys feel. So you know I just wanted to uh, get a group together and try to start something, and I'm glad we did. Derek, going back to that, there were a lot of people at that time saying, "Well, you just don't pay a running back. You know, why would you pay him?" Obviously, it worked out well. But then, do you feel like that story is at least something to show people actually you pay a running back and it can work out? Um, you know. Uh, Hopefully, um, you know, I just try to come out and work and be the best teammate and the best player that I can and um, improve my worth. And I feel like hopefully I'm a guy that, you know, teams can look at and be like, you know, it is a possibility. And there's some good backs out there that, that, that are doing the same thing. Um, I know it's hard because, you know, we get hit a lot. Uh, our career span is probably shorter than others. But still at the same time, when you have that window and these guys are being special and they're great talent, and they're making plays and, you know, they're, they're, they're a franchise player, I feel like they should get their share due, you know, just because, you know, our, our, our time span just is not as long as others. It's a game of injury. If you're going to get hit, injury is going to happen. But at the end of the day, as long as you have a guy that comes in, do, do, does what he's supposed to do, r represent the organization in the first-class way, then I feel like, you know, it should be no question. Do you think the that? amount of touches that running backs get is overblown? Where it's like, you know yourself, you get 300 plus carries. Saquon had 300 plus last year, and now look at that. Do you think that's overblown? Or do you think feel like that's too much wear and tear? Well, I think um, as at the running back position, you know, the more carries that we get, I mean, you can have, like Nick Chubb said, we talked about um, that, I mean, you can run for 2,000 yards, and, you know, 2,000 yards is great, but everybody else is looking at the carries. So if you have... 380 or 400 plus carries, that's the thing that everybody looks at. So no matter what we do, it, it, it seems like even if we are productive when it comes to, you know, negotiating, it's kind of like used against us, you know, at, at that point. So, you know, um, all you can do is just try to be the best player you can and hope your team understands your value and appreciate you trying to do the best you can to carry the load to help your team improve, win games, and hopefully get to the Super Bowl. What do you think of the Guardian cap and how do you feel with that on your head? Ooh, how it look. It looks how it feels. I mean, it's, I mean they're trying, trying to protect us. Um, I, I understand it. Um, it's not very fashionable, but uh, we got to wear it. That's the rules. Was there a time in this off season that you looked at what they did in the draft and some of the guys that they let go, like Ben and Taylor and Bud, that had contributed here and felt like this team was in transition? And do you feel like they've addressed most of the needs that they've had? Um, no, I wish, you know, we could have kept those guys, the guys my brother, but um, things happen the way it's supposed to. That's the business side. I don't try to get too caught up in the business side, just focus on what I need to do and let them do their job and see what we need to help improve our team and um, plug those guys in and go out there and try to execute and, and improve while we're out here. And um, that's all That's all I can do is just worry about what my job is and try to help every guy out here be the best player they can be as a teammate. Derek, how do you feel, I guess, Derek, I guess physically, mentally, heading into year eight and, and how you like the group that's maybe around you on offense? Oh, yeah, I feel I feel good, man. Um, it's, it's, I'm, I'm glad to be back. Um, Got a lot of new faces around here. Um, you know, guys getting to get, get used to our culture and what we do around here. That they've been doing a great job. All you can ask guys to do is to show up, be present, be attentive in meetings, and come out here and let it show on the field by the way you work each and every day. Derek, you kind of alluded to it, but you know, how do you go about compartmentalizing what you need to do to get ready for this year? 
versus what the future may hold down the road? Yeah, I can't worry about that. I got to take it one day at a time and trust in my training and trust in what I've been doing and go out there and, and be me and let everything take care of itself. You know, I pray and then let everything else happen the way it's, way it's supposed to. Everything happens for a reason, but just take it one day at a time, continue to want to improve and get better every day and then let the chips fall where they may. Doing that Zoom call makes you think a little bit more about next year or were you kind of just thinking about everybody else when you were talking to the next? Yeah, no, not, not really. Um, you know, we're just trying to send a message out, trying to be stronger together to help one another when that time comes and um, be vocal about it um, pretty much you know, th throughout the season. And, um, you know, just, just focus on the now. You know, when, you, when you're here, it's your job. So you got to focus on your job and doing your job uh, to, to perfection as close as you can. And then when that time comes, worry about that. Was Nick Saban really talking with you about being a linebacker? Uh, no, it probably was a thought in his head <laughs> at the time. But, um, you know. I kind of, I probably switched it as, as time went on. So, but um, you know, he's a defensive-minded coach, so I'm probably sure he had visions of me being on the defensive side of the ball. What kind of linebacker would you have been? I've been probably a Ray Lewis type. <laughs> you know? Hey, you somebody know? asked me for my mail back. How many five-year-olds would it take to tackle you? Man, I saw that. They are crazy. They be coming up with some all type of stuff. Uh, I don't, I don't know. How about y'all get y'all kids and we'll, we'll see what. <laughs> If I spot some five year olds and see what see how it goes. But people all say all types of stuff. How many, that, man. how many media members? How many what? Media members. Y'all come on, come on, we can go right now. <laughs> Let's go. I'm smart enough not to. <laughs> hey Jared, you said when Arden, when Arden came in, like that man crazy. Like he is great. Like he's yelling from start to finish in practice. Just what is it like even to have on the opposite side somebody kind of pestering and kind of stirring up things defensively to push the offense? Yeah, he has energy every day. He brings the energy, something that we need on both sides of the ball. Somebody who's high energy gets everybody going. And, um, you know, the competition on uh, offense and defense is always great when you got guys over there that bring that high energy and bring that intensity to practice. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, it's, uh, it's been awesome. I mean, like, you know, being away from the game for as long as I've, I've been, you know, missing all of last year, you know, obviously you miss – making plays in front of the fans and the games because, you know, that feeling is just euphoric. But honestly, like, being away for that long, you start to appreciate and miss even more, like, just, like, coming out here on the practice field and, you know, hearing Jeff talk or just hearing your guys joking around. But at the same time, everybody's just out here grinding and having a good time. So, I mean, sorry, it's hot. But, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic to be back had a full year based on your timetable when you yeah. suffered the injury. How much an advantage is that? Oh, for sure. I mean, it's definitely an advantage because, you know, obviously having the time that I had, you know, this whole off season, it wasn't just about, you know, my knee. You know, I had a chance to also continue to improve my game and work on my game and not just, you know, rehab, but to be able to do, you know, my position work and stuff like that throughout the off season, you know, it got me right where, you know, we're right on schedule uh, for this season, and, you know, I'm excited about that. How do you, think it's, I mean, how do you feel? Better than you thought you would? About like you thought? I know it's a process, but... Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a long process. I mean, like, throughout it, you're definitely frustrated a little bit because, you know, there's times you're doing everything you can, and you feel like you're kind of staying the same, but then out of nowhere, you just stick to the plan, trust the people you're working with, and you make those jumps out of nowhere. And, you know, now, being where I'm at, you know, it feels great. Uh, I don't even think about it when I'm out there on the field, which is awesome. So, you know, kudos to all the people I've been working with and the, and the time and energy we've put in because it feels great. What motivated you, what motivated you to uh, go ahead, John. Um, in, in terms of making those steps, um, uh, when did you start feeling confident that, you know, the knee was going to be okay, that nothing was going to happen? When did that sort of kick in? Uh, sometime this off season, to be honest, like, I was out here doing full speed stuff in the off season, so I would imagine before then. Uh, but now nah, it's felt good for a while. Now you know I'm just, you know, continuing to do what I do, making sure you know that I'm ready to go out here and you know practice, get these reps uh, in live action. What did you use as motivation through those hard days where it seemed like you know I guess the rehab and, and all would never end? Uh, honestly, just trust. You know. Working with the people here, you know, I stayed here all offseason working with them, you know, they kept my head, you know, in a good space. Um, and 
I don't know, I just feel like I'm a resilient guy and I just feel like I knew at the end of the day that I was going to come back stronger from this and you know I just look at examples across the league but you know Nick Bosa is a guy that continuously came into my head you know with what he did and then you know he came back and balled out and then balled out even more the next year so you know expectations are high you know what I'm saying and you know I worked my ass off to get to this point and the people in here have helped me so much so I just I just feel like you know I just I feel great reach out to some guys across the league and they do that no nah, I mean I just talk to guys here like Ryan uh Taylor you know all the guys that have been through this uh and it's it's just like it's just a weird process and everybody's timetable is different um and, you know, I just had to, like I said, just keep trusting the plan uh, that was put in place for me. And like I said, you know, I feel great. And that's what it's all about. When you said it, was it contact? Can you talk us through what, uh, what happened? When I when tore my – Nah, man, I don't really focus on the past like that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm forward. Uh, what happened was I tore it a while ago, and now it's damn near perfect. day is going to be how your knee has responded. Each time you challenge it, like how has your knee responded as far as to make you be able to be out here without the brace? No, it's responding good. Uh, you know, it's feeling great uh, pretty much every day, to be honest. And obviously, like, I'm doing stuff all day, every day uh, to make sure I'm staying on top of it. Um, but yeah, no, nah, it's, it's responding good. And, you know, like he said, you know, the goal is just to keep increasing and keep ascending. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, they've been awesome. Uh, you know, not just like, you know, you see them flash on the field, you know, consistently, but it's also like they're a culture fit here, you know, in the meeting rooms and, and in the locker room, you know, they're awesome to be around and they just, they fit in here well. Like, it's one thing to be able to contribute out there on the field, but to be able to contribute in a locker room and, you know, to, to fit in with what, you know, how we do things here, uh, that's a big thing. And they for sure, you know, they fit that here. Uh, we met at uh, at Exos when we were training for the combine. Uh, but yeah, now nah, we go all the way back to I think it was 2018. Uh, I've kind of watched him from afar uh, grow into the player he is now. Um, Arden's awesome to be around. Like it's it's insane. Like as soon as he steps in the door, energy, and it, it's awesome. Uh, he's a really cool guy. watching film, you know, maybe work you did in the classroom, and you, you, will you think that'll pay off this year? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, just from like a hand standpoint, like obviously like it's been a while since, you know, I've been able to go out here and do live action against, you know, another player. So obviously it'll probably take me a week, a week or so throughout this camp, you know, with the type of player I am, you know, to get that timing down with, you know, my hands and my footwork and stuff like that, um, which is fine. Uh, but no, I just feel like I've improved from the from the standpoint of just like enhancing my pass rush moves, but also like taking a step uh, in the new things that in the new tech in new techniques. I ain't trying to say too much, but in the new tech in new techniques. When when uh, the defense wins a play out there, you're in the backfield. It would be a dead play. Offense keeps something big, celebrates like they won the play. You guys laugh about that amongst yourselves? I know Jeff Jeff will, will be loud about it sometimes. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, <laughs> when you cut the film on, you know who won, who won that rep. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Vrays has to, he has to structure the practice in a way for, like, everybody's getting work in regardless of the end result of a certain play. But, like, we know when we cut the film on, like, who won which rep. Can you see some of the new faces here and some of the old familiar faces gone? Did it, did it ever feel like? This uh, nah, I mean, I never thought that. I mean, obviously, people outside of the building, I feel like, kind of sleep on us, but we're a confident group of guys here in the locker room, and we know what we have and what we bring to the table. Uh, it's the, the whole transitioning and stuff like that, never, it never crossed my mind at all. I mean, that's just, I mean, it sucks, don't get me wrong, but like, that's the NFL. I mean, the turnover's crazy. You know, 
Braves and Rand, they're trying to put together the most competitive roster and they're doing what uh, they think can get us to that point. And that's just how it is in the NFL. Different this offseason, you're bigger, you change your diet, you know, feel stronger. Uh, I'm definitely stronger, more explosive for sure, faster. Uh, I mean, I would say I was definitely probably just more strict on my diet because I'm like into that stuff and I was just doing everything possible to like make my knee feel better the next day. Oh, I mean, it's it's really an all day, every day thing with him. But I mean, that's just who he is, man. He's he does that all the time, man. He's hey, he sets the tempo for our defense and this team. So I'm definitely glad to be back around him. Appreciate it. Running backs have spent a lot of time in the last couple weeks talking about making sure that their value is known. Is maybe the challenge that there are some good running backs and then there finding great running backs, AKA number 22, can be tough to get at this point in the game or? Uh, what point in the game, Teresa? How much does running back still matter in the NFL? I mean, I think it's a valuable position. I mean, every week we, we, we look and see what matchups are and who we're playing. And I mean, there's a lot of dynamic running backs in, in, in the league. And you know, that's, everybody can choose to pay their employees what they want to pay them. And, uh, you know, that, that I'll leave it at that. But there's, there's plenty of good backs in this league, really right good there? backs. Uh, sorry. Would you say the, the, the contract you guys gave Derek a couple of years ago kind of is a, sort of an argument against people who say you should never? Nope, I, that, that's an argument for or what. It's, it's based on, you know, everything we want to do uh, around here is about what, what we're going to do in the future and not for past performance. It's, it's got to be based on on what the production or the value is going to be going forward. So, you know, I don't know if that's a case for or against. It's everything's in, in, afterward would be a case for. Great. Yeah. And I think everything is a, is a case by case situation. I'm not, I'm not really sure what, what we're, we're asking me, you know, to comment on. It's not, you know, this is, this is everybody has a, a certain amount to spend. Um, each and every year, and they can choose to spend it however they want. Before this team, given how much things have revolved around Derrick Henry since you've been here, is it accurate to say that, that you know the Titans rely on the running back position a little more than, than other teams in the league? I'm trying to coach one team at a time. I'm not trying to coach 31 other teams. I'm trying to focus on us and, and our improvement. Right. Chill. Well, I mean, the durability has been really good. He had the one year with the foot, but, you know, the durability and has, has been there and you know, week in and week out. So he's done some really good things for us. What do you like about Hubbard and what's the challenge to him kind of get up to speed with you know, gets here day one? You know, he's a veteran who's played and he's played multiple positions, has some versatility. Uh, the challenge is, you know, they walk in at 7 in the morning and, you know, signs a contract and, you know, he's got to figure out where the equipment room is and, and get ready to get, get equipment, but then also try to meet with an O-line coach. And, you know, I thought those guys that were next to him the day did a nice job allowing him to go out there and, and get some team reps. And, you know, that's a testament to not only Chris, but the guys that, you know, are next to him that are helping him, you know, run those plays that he had 20 minutes to look at. Regarding also last year, how much can Kyle Phillips be a contributor to this offense and kind of bring a unique skill set to the receivers? Well, it's going to depend on Kyle and, and how well he does and his availability. Regarding cap expansion, go to running backs and linebackers, and what did the data show about maybe? The data was really good. You know, those, the, the impact, um, the amount of impact, you know, the force was decreased up to 20%. Significant numbers. I think that they, you know, those, those head injuries in training camp were down. Um, for some reason, I thought we had maybe the inside, maybe we added the running backs and inside linebackers. I'm not sure. I know the edge guys were there. So um, pretty much everybody we got covered except for the DBs and the receivers. Coach, we saw Jalen, you know, he's making some reps at one, set right tackle today. Is that going to be kind of a evolving thing just day to day with who you're putting up there? Yeah, I just want to see somebody just 
give everybody an opportunity um, and, and see if, you know, somebody takes advantage of it. And, you know, we'll keep moving guys around us to see where, see where we end up. Well, I think the biggest thing is just his energy, his understanding of, of what we're doing, um, kind of working him back in, and he's been great to communicate with as far as adding things each day. You know, we're just getting started, but, um, you know, stringing some plays together, see how he responds, see how he feels, and then, you know, we'll add more tomorrow if if that warrants. How beneficial has the options to work for Rashad Weaver's strength and conditioning stuff? Has that paid dividends out here so far? Yeah. You know, and he was one of those guys that, that put a lot of you know, good work in and was up for conversation uh, for that award. And, and I think it shows. You know, Weave has you know, got a certain play style. He's got great length. He knows how to use it. And, and he plays extremely hard. He's not going to be the fastest player out there. Um, but, uh, but he goes hard and he's got length. And, and I appreciate that he knows who he is. And so I think his maturity, I think his strength, I think his body has changed. And, you know, some guys are, you know, 21, 22, and eight are a certain level of strength and explosiveness. And some guys are 25 or 26. I, I don't know, but uh, you know, he's kept working at it and, and appears to, to be, you know, headed in the right direction as we start camp. I know it's specific to the individual, probably, but can that be tough at times to kind of get players to know who they are? Like you said, uh, I, I don't know if it's tough. I think it sometimes could could be, you know challenging because they do watch you know great players and, and you always want to emulate great players but you want to make sure that you're watching the guys that have a similar skill set um, at every position uh, and so you can learn from that and it's an also um, explain to the player like there's a lot of ways to, to get your job done and do it uh, very well when the defense has, has won a play with the tag or a sack or, or the quarterback's clock expiring but the offense goes on to do something effective or successful is the context of that important yeah i mean i think you mean it there's somebody's going to have a good play on on one play and somebody's going to wish they had done a little bit better um but but i think you always want to you know keep everybody involved you know those are some great opportunities today i don't think we've had that many scramble opportunities uh successful opportunities since i've been here and so you know, those are big plays down the field. Sometimes, you know, quarterbacks are hard to bring down, get guys outside the pocket. Uh, receivers getting into their vision and, and being able to extend the play is certainly going to be important. So um, we, we just don't want to manufacture any endings and we don't want to just stop uh, and have the quarterback just stand there. So, you know, if we get a good pass rush and we need to block better, great. But if not, maybe we hang on to the guy pushing by. Uh, we've seen a lot of instances where the quarterback doesn't doesn't go down as a sack and extends the play. So we're going to finish, and, and I think they do a great job of playing through the whistle. This is just the second day that we've seen Hopkins out there where he made some nice catches. Also looked like he was in each period. How difficult is it for a player to come in, to sign with the team, and the first week of training camp, be able to make that tra transition kind of look a little seamless? I think that'd be a great question for DeAndre. Um, you know, he's trying to stay on top of the installation. And uh, wanted to get back, wanted to make sure that uh, he was out there today, that he continues to work. And you know, we'll, we'll help him get what he needs to, to be ready. And, and, and most importantly, understand you know, the relationship with the quarterback. Yep. Um, thought he came back, was in great shape. You could tell that he had been working from the conditioning test. And you know, just it doesn't look like a guy that's uh, winded or, or getting tired. And I think that. That's a testament to him and, and, and just being ready to go. And I know that he's he's excited to string some days together and, and, and continue that improvement. And uh, you know, we've seen a lot of really good football from Christian and, and he knows that. And he can and he can tell the difference between uh, when he plays like a one and when he plays somewhat uh, you know, I'd say it lackadaisical and, and just, you know, he knows that we expect more at those times and, and so does he. So this is about consistency and building and, you know, if you make a mistake, you know, coming back and, and understanding why and, and, and competing again. That's that's a challenge of a cornerback. What have you seen from this young group of guys you've got trying for backup roles and safety? Well, that's a little early, but, uh, you know, Mike Brown's been, been really, you know, 
in depth with uh, special teams and is working at PP and, you know, um, you know, Elijah's transitioning back there. And I think the more that he can see and understand and do things, hopefully we can use his instincts that he becomes more comfortable. And then, you know, the young guys, um, you know, that we have. So, again, we've got to start identifying some guys that, that can help us on the back end. Well, I think just getting some reps and seeing things and understanding that routes play you know, differently uh, versus different coverages, a lot more space, a lot more things to see probably uh, back there than, than just at nickel. Uh, feel pretty comfortable that he could go in there at nickel and first and second down and, you know, do that. But, but right now I think a lot of those things, because you just get back there and now it's, you're seeing, you know, a, a lot. And uh, the more that he's back there, I think the more comfortable he'll be and, and understand how to match things. How do you feel like Andre Dillard has handled the left tackle duties so far to start camp? I mean, we're two days in, so and I think if he keeps working against Arden, I think he'll be just fine. Arden's offered us a lot of, um, you know, just impact over there just in a short time. I mean, we don't have pads on and they're not sacking a quarterback, but I know that, you know, Arden's able to mix moves, and so he's getting – uh, multi uh, multiples uh, moves and, and just different looks and, you know, wiggle, long arm, you know, chop, everything you can give them. So that will take all we can get. In your career, did, did you have coaches who let you stay at home during training camp and how much of a, a privilege is that for guys and how much they, they seem to all really appreciate it? I don't know. That'd be a question for those guys. I don't know how much they appreciate it or not. Um, you know, every year is different. Just trying to get these guys rest and, and, and get them, you know, back recovered. So you'd have to ask them if they appreciate it. So your thinking in terms of giving it to them is a much more comfortable life? Nah, it has nothing to do with comfort or how hard we work out here. That's good. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.